for over two centuries, certain families have steadily and deliberately accumulated immense wealth and power in America. Though largely operating behind closed doors, their influence has been profound in shaping this nation's trajectory. You likely know some of their names. Rockefeller, J.P. Morgan, and Rothschild. Dynasties that have stood the test of time, amassing ever greater fortunes with each new generation. But how exactly have they wielded such omnipotent control from the shadows for so long? The foundations of dynastic power in America were built on banking dominance established centuries ago across Europe. In the late 1700s, Meyer Amschel Rothschild had the vision to dispatch his five sons to major financial hubs. Based in Frankfurt, he instructed each to establish a bank in London, Paris, Vienna, and Naples. By the 1800s, the Rothschild family banking empire was emerging. Through their widespread network, they soon gained unprecedented influence over world finance. While accruing exorbitant wealth, the Rothschilds also cultivated power through strategic loans and partnerships with the wealthiest aristocrats and industry leaders. Meanwhile, across the Atlantic, another banking giant was on the rise in America named John Pierpont Morgan. Born into a prominent New York family in 1837, J.P. Morgan went on to revolutionize American industry through bold investments and acquisitions. He aggressively financed the monopolization of industries like railroads, forming U.S. Steel and Titan companies, including General Electric. However, Morgan is perhaps most famous for his critical role in stabilizing the American economy. In 1907, financial markets were in frenzied panic until Morgan single-handedly intervened. Through brazen deal-making, he banded together a consortium of banks to inject crucial funds and restore confidence. Then, in 1913, he saved the gold standard by loaning the federal government $60 million in gold reserves. From these early 20th century origins, the banking supremacies of J.P. Morgan and the Rothschilds were firmly established. Having secured unfathomable power and profit through their financial wizardry, their dynasties were poised for multi-generational dominance in both Europe and America. While the bankers padded their pockets, John D. Rockefeller saw dollar signs in black gold. In the late 1800s, he set his sights on dominating the volatile oil industry. Through relentless acquisition of competitors and ruthless cost-cutting, by the 1870s, Rockefeller's Standard Oil controlled 90% of America's refineries. This oil baron cornered the market so tight, you needed a drill bit to get in. His net worth ballooned over $400 billion in today's dollars, Talk about striking liquid gold. Across the Brandywine River in Delaware, another dynasty was forged from flames. Eleuthera Irene Dupont established America's first gunpowder mill in 1802. Almost literally explosive growth followed as their industry mushroom clouded. Through the 1800s, the Dupont family expanded gunpowder production for military use during wars makes sense they gained immense political sway. Like, what politician wants to anger the guys supplying the ammo? Their influence grew so vast that they were even credited with single-handedly banning industrial cannabis and enforcing prohibition to protect their fabrics business. Today, the DuPonts keep controlling whole new industries like genetically modified seeds. In the remote Arctic, their mysterious doomsday vault shields the future of our crops from the apocalypse. The oil barons and weapons tycoons built early fortunes, but it was a couple of brothers from Arkansas who perfected the art of empire through the ultimate American institution, retail. In the post-war boom of the 1950s, Sam and Bud Walton saw shops popping up everywhere. These folks need low prices, they reckoned. 
In 1962, they opened the first Walmart in Rogers with everything from toys to toolboxes at low prices. At first, Little Bentonville was just a humble hub, but within decades, Walmart supercenters were sprouting across America faster than kudzu. From groceries to gardening supplies, Walmart became America's one-stop shop and the largest company by revenue on Earth. Bagging over $500 billion annually, Sam and Bud's vision made the Walton clan richer than Croesus. The family dynasty now enjoys a $169.7 billion fortune, making each brother wealthier than some small nations. So, how do these powerful retail families influence things? Well, the older generation supports conservative causes that the GOP likes, but the younger heirs tend to be more liberal and support groups like the Lincoln Project. Regardless of their political leanings, Walmart's enormous influence is felt on both sides of the political spectrum in Washington. While others accrued wealth, one family set their sights on the highest political prize. It all began in 1895 with Prescott Bush, a Yale man who found more than just books in the secretive Skull and Bones Society. There, he hatched a plot that makes our conspiracies look tame. In 1933, Prescott took part in a bizarre coup attempt to overthrow President Roosevelt. Luckily, their business plot fizzled faster than an empty keg at a frat party. But the Bush clan was just getting warmed up in the corridors of power. Fast forward to 1989, Prescott's grandson, George H.W. Bush, was sworn in as the 41st president. Hold on to your hats, because 12 years later, his son, George W., also took the Oval Office. These Bush boys sure knew how to leverage their connections. Some question if their terms in the big chair had less to do with merit and more to do with opportunity. Both Bushes found ways to embroil America in wars hugely profitable for, yep, you guessed it, family oil companies and banking pals like Halliburton. Funny how war and fortune so often go hand in bloody hand for the political dynasties. So while others pulled financial strings, the Bushes grabbed power by the ballots. But make no mistake, their ambition was as dynastic as a Targaryen and twice they seized the ultimate throne of influence in America. Our next family dynasty forged their empire through the might of American industry. Fred Koch laid the foundation for Koch Industries in the 1940s, starting with the Texas oil business and transforming it into a colossal global conglomerate. With Fred's sons, David and Charles, at the helm, Coke Industries underwent a meteoric rise, evolving into the private juggernaut it is today. This powerhouse rakes in over $110 billion in annual revenue, securing its position as the second most valuable private company in the United States, trailing only Cargill. The Coke empire now extends its reach into various sectors, including forestry, mining, chemicals, and consumer goods. However, the Koch brothers' influence doesn't merely end with industry. They've poured hundreds of millions into the realm of politics, striving to shape policies that align with their vision of free market capitalism. Whether it's influencing the denial of climate change or funneling dark money into election campaigns, the Kochs fund agendas that expand their financial empire's domains. Over the span of decades, the Kochs strategically engineered mergers and acquisitions, creating intricate supply chains that provide everyday essentials like brawny paper towels, lycra fabrics, and Dixie cups. Yet critics argue that their billions in political influence are wielded to manipulate a system that maximizes their profits. So, while other dynasties claimed thrones, the Kochs acquired absolute dominion across diverse industries through substantial campaign contributions, their realm now stretches further than that of any king, extending even into the very foundations of American democracy itself. 
The Rothschilds first established global financial dominion centuries ago. Today, their wealth of over $400 billion dwarfs even the largest living tycoons. Meanwhile, other early titans like Morgan and Rockefeller built empires through industrial monopolization that shaped the 20th century. Over the course of multiple centuries, these families meticulously nurtured their multi-generational dominance, wielding influence through wealth, control of markets, and the manipulation of policies that served their dynastic interests. Their vast fortunes and influence have been carefully passed down from one generation to the next. As America faces new tests in the decades ahead, its people must ask, who will guide our path? Invisible hands that have pulled the strings of power for lifetimes beyond count? Or the citizens whose destiny is determined by forces beyond their view or vote? Make no mistake, the true architects of the American empire remain obscured from the masses. That's it for today's video. Thank you for your time. We'd love to know your thoughts on this issue in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. Thank you for watching and consider watching our other videos right here.